So now let's let's proceed. Unless there is a doubt there, we are going to proceed here. Right? We are going to finish atomic structure and also start doing the dual nature of radiations today itself. We are going a little ahead of the schedule because this tiny this is a tiny little portion. It doesn't need two days to study. Ionization potential. So what is ionization potential or ionization potential energy? Let's see that. Let's say there is an electron there. Let, let's do our own. <laughs> so this was hydrogen, let's say. Okay, and now hydrogen has these colors mean nothing. These are just for illustration, please. So there is one shell, there's second shell, and there is a third shell. Now this is n is equal to one. This is n is equal to two and this is n equals three right n equals one is the ground state the other one is the first excitation state and this is the second excitation state now you have electron here it's it's very happy anything with the least amount of energy is going to be very happy and it, it keeps on doing that forever but now let's say somehow you give it some energy Take how much energy energy is given by please remember you have to remember these things energy is given as z square <coughs> let's write it properly so yeah z square into 13.6 by n square maybe i can write it like this electron volts so z is the amount of protons in there it's the atomic number and n is the number of shell you're going to put n is equal to one for the red shell n is equal to two so you'll plug in two here right and plug in three here so that's how you get different energies associated with each cell so let's say electron is here and this is hydrogen atom so energy is going to be equal to z is one divided by n square which is definitely one times 13.6 so that is 13.6 electron volts of energy that it has Okay, but that is negative. I should be adding a negative sign there. So let me be technically correct there. Energy is negative energy. So negative here. So I will write down negative here. I don't have room to write there. Anybody who did not understand this thing, please ask me. Ab dekho isme kya hota hai? The second shell. When the electron comes to the second shell, the amount of energy is how much? It's one divided by two squared times 13.6 and that's also negative so let's write negative number four gaya is me to four gaya to three take a point uh, three point four electron volts so negative three point four electron volts of energy so the energy is more now, isn't it? Because negative 13.6 is less than negative 3.4. So this is more energy compared to the red shell. Now let's see what happens at black. <coughs> black is going to be energy is negative one by three square times 13.6. This gives you negative nine gear to one by 46.5 and a five uh sorry uh, for sorry for all that six now gear yeah, um one much okay guys so negative 1.51 uh electron volts see if i have made any calculation mistake please okay so this is again more than black this is the most out of these no not most out of these only not completely most now you can go to the fourth shell fourth shell will have less of negative number so it is more 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 it keeps increasing until you go to the e infinity you can say <coughs> that's one by infinity square times 13.6 that gives you zero electron volts and that is the most amount of energy okay negative number say zero ki taraf ja rahe, that is going to be the increasing value so this was in the third orbit this was in the second orbit this is in the worst or first orbit infinity is zero electron volts Anybody who did not understand, <coughs> you got to remember this expression 13.6, and that is in electron volts. If you have to multiply, convert into joules, you can multiply by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus negative 19. Okay, if nobody is responding here with any queries, I'm going to proceed. So let's go to this one. 
excitation energy now let's say the electron was in one of the shells which is let's say it was in the red shell it has negative 13.6 electron volts so we'll make it again we will make again insert a new one here so there is this what i made neutron proton inside then there was a red shell here then there was green shell here and then there were a black shell here okay so energy associated like that here 19 uh, negative 13.6 tha yahan pe then it is green mein kitna hai negative 3.4 and black is negative 1.51 okay let's say the electron is here let's say electron wants to come here it cannot because it means that it had less energy let's say this watch was here it wants to come here it cannot it's no way it can do that unless i give it some energy my muscles are giving energy to that and then it can come here okay and once it comes here it has more energy but if it jumps back it releases that energy as kinetic energy and finally as heat energy or at and sound energy so that is exactly the same concept of kya karenge 13.6 minus 3.4 karo so 10.8 electron volts of energy if somehow i give this electron 10.8 electron volts of energy it can come here it will it will come here if i give plus 10.8 electron volts similarly you can give more energy and it will come here right so this is excitation energy kitni energy how much energy do i give <coughs> To the electron at n is equal to one, so that it can come to n is equal to two. That is the excitation energy. Similarly, from green to black is another excitation energy. Or maybe directly jumps up here. It can also do that. So you can give 12. Point whatever that is, 12.09 electron volts of energy, and it will come to the black shell directly. This is what this slide is talking about. Please see this. Any doubts? Any confusions? Ask me. any confusions you're supposed to ask me please <clears throat> nobody no confusions okay so then then let's let's move on in that case ionization potential energy now ionization is basically the electron was at one of these shells let's say neutron proton and their electron was here you want to take it to infinite distance away this is more like escape velocity if you remember from your 11th grade you take this object and throw with 11.2 kilometers per second it goes to infinity this is exactly the same concept electron is here how much energy do i give so that it goes to infinity so this is very very clear that at infinity energy is zero here you have energy of where is it here you have energy of negative 13.6 so you have to give positive 13.6 somehow so that when it goes to infinity it has zero energy or it is able to go to infinity so ionization energy for the electron at the ground level is 13.6 joules ionization energy when this is here is only 3.4 joules or oh, electron volts not joules sorry sorry electron volts now ionization energy <coughs> needed when this is here is positive 1.51 electron volts of energy clear everybody is clear with that say yes or no say yes or no please take it take it okay okay so we will move on so this is what we are saying so ionization potential is see potential energy what is energy potential is energy per unit charge right so then you take that energy divided by e that is potential so you take this and then divide by 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs that becomes a potential okay so let's move on binding energy binding energy is exactly the same concept of what we used in gravitation there so when you are at the ground level 
the the electron is bounded by 13.6 right negative energy it's a binding energy so it is bounded by 13.6 and that is exactly what the ionization energy is so whatever is the binding energy is exactly equal to ionization energy you have to give equal and opposite kind of energy when you are at the second level you give whatever is the binding energy there that is your ionization energy Now emission absorption of photons. Now this is this is the second. Everybody is clear. We will work on this now. So so let's see, and we'll we'll work here. I don't have to create a new slide every time. So let's say this was the n is equal to one, and this is n is equal to two. So we know there is more energy, and there is less energy here, right? So less energy here more energy here. in order from here to here it needs some kind of energy but how what kind of energy can you provide you can take a photon and that photon energy is absorbed by the electron and electron jumps up how much energy should the photon have and today we will study photons after maybe half an hour from now we will start studying photons so now it, photons energy and photon is a packet of energy so electron absorbs that packet of energy it gets more energy than it had now and it had if it has enough energy it can jump up otherwise it will re reject it otherwise it is completely going to reject it if it doesn't have enough energy as any aati energy de de thoda sa chal it needs complete quantized amount of energy difference 10.8 electron volts isko chahiye so let's let's actually see what i'm trying to say so this is electron here and if i have a photon here photon has only 5 electron volts of energy lele bhai nahi it will not it will not it is going to reject it because that energy is supposed to bring it up to here maybe that's not possible right? it cannot be there so it has to take exactly 10.8 electron volts of energy so if this has 10.8 electron volts it will take it happily absorb it and then go to this shell but then when it comes back it is going to release <coughs> a photon with 10.8 electron volts of energy energy cannot be created nor destroyed so it will absorb a photon and get excited into a new shell higher shell and when it comes from higher to lower it can it has to release photons it has, doesn't have any choice and that photon can be blue light green light yellow light purple light ultraviolet infrared radio wave depending on the energy there okay it can be any of those depending on the energy <coughs> okay anybody has any doubts with this if i'm going fast please let me know okay So energy frequency and wave number of the photon emitted right we we are going to study photons in detail anyways in today class so this is what we have so whatever is the difference in energy is what we are talking about so i i think we will we'll do this a little systematically here so there is a nucleus here then this is <laughs> n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 very ugly circles there but that's that's all right n is equal to 4 aise chalte jayenge you can have to up to infinite level right so let's say the electron was here now it has options it can come here or it can come here or it can come here then it further has choices if it comes here then it can do this and do this right it or it can do this i mean there are so many choices it has to to it's more like it, there are steps here and it can jump a few steps there right? so it can do this or, or maybe it can do this it can, it takes jumps here and then it jumps here there are so many options here so whenever it jumps it releases some energy how much energy whatever is the old energy right old energy old energy kitni thi iske paas minus of uh, z square by n 1 square ठीक है, दैट इज द ओरिजिनल थिंग टाइम्स 13.6. दिस इज द ओल्ड एनर्जी माइनस द न्यू एनर्जी माइनस द न्यू एनर्जी इज दिस जी स्क्वेर बाय एन टू स्क्वेर टाइम्स 13.6. पॉइंट सिक्स इफ यू टेक ऑल दिस 
like plus minus and all that you end up getting z square times 13.6 and this becomes positive so i can say 1 by n square minus or n2 square minus 1 by n1 square now since n2 is less this number is more anyways right so this is the amount of energy that we will be released and similarly you can calculate the energy that is taken that is needed from the one shell to another <coughs> if you have not understood this please let me know nobody is saying anything should i start asking individually like always shreya hegre shreya bhat shivangi sai kumar rukeya ninad mrunal abhinaya linus grishma ganit atri has everybody understood that okay so everybody is saying understood so then then i trust you so here is is more like like printed version of whatever we did we have only studied energy we have not studied photons so you will get confused there so let me teach you a little on photons if you do not know what is a photon photon is just a packet of energy it's just a packet of energy so when we will study dual nature of radiation today later today we will see more about it but it's packet of energy what you need to know as of now is each photon has energy equals to h times the frequency where h is the planck's constant you need not memorize this if you can memorize well and good you don't have to this number will be given to you but then after you do certain amount of questions these numbers will be on your fingertips i'm very poor with memorizing anything i i did horrible in biology history and those subjects where you have to memorize but then after you play with these kind of scenarios for a while these these are on your fingertips okay so 6.626 times 10 to the power 9 minus 34 this is the number you plug in here and the frequency red color this particular wavelength this particular frequency you plug in there that is the amount of energy one photon has so each photon has this much of energy theek hai clear now i already know the energy that is being released so i can go the other way f is the frequency and in our f is the frequency which is also written as mu but f, f i prefer this because sometimes many students i have seen in my past classes they get confused with this letter and v maybe because of my poor handwriting or maybe because for whatever so f i prefer f now now we go the other way we already calculated 10.8 electron volts and then converted into joules right so then i can go the other way i know how much of energy is released i can divide by the planck's constant i will get the frequency of the light that is being emitted so i know which color light that is right now you also know the wavelength is or, or the <coughs> speed is equal to lambda times the frequency right so the wavelength is c by frequency theek hai to isko ulta kar do c by frequency so c by frequency is a jaga lambda is equal to h c by energy and the wave number wave number is this is e by h c <coughs> don't have to memorize anything except that e is equal to h f this is the only thing you got to memorize other things you should play yourself like like write them and see how they come So each photon has hf amount of energy 